Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today I've got a practice question for you. This is related to the neuromuscular and nervous system. So on test day, this is the second largest system on the exam. As we go through this podcast, we're going through the FSBPT's published content outline, which describes all of the sections that you're, and the number of questions in each section that you will encounter on test day. So today, the neuromuscular nervous system, it encompasses about 39 to 48 questions. So certainly a number of questions. It is the second largest system on the exam. And as per the usual, my advice here is make sure that you're studying proportionately. So as you go through your studies, make sure that you're spending lots of time in the big systems like cardio, musculo, and neuro, and certainly not forgetting the other systems, but you don't necessarily need to spend tons and tons and tons of time in those systems where the majority of questions will come from the big three, cardio, musculo, and neuro. So again, this is one of those things that I really wished someone had just sat me down and patted the back of my hand and said, Will, this is the proportion of questions that you're going to encounter on test day. And again, it really helps to direct your studies when you know precisely how many questions are showing up in each section on the exam. So 39 to 48 questions related to the neuromuscular and nervous system. So I've got a question for you today about ALS or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. But before we get to that, just a quick reminder, be sure to check out ptfinalexam.com for all of our great info. We've got lots of courses. One of the things that we added last year, we added tutoring. So if you need one-on-one tutoring, you can find that over at ptfinalexam.com. You'll be able to find all of the course offerings we have and make sure to dominate on test day. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into our practice question. As per our usual, I will read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about it together. All right. Which of the following groups of cranial nerves is most likely to be impaired in a patient with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis? So which of the following groups of cranial nerves is most likely to be impaired in a patient with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis? Option one, nerves two and three. So (laughs) I'll try not to have too many numbers here, but uh, first option, two and three. B, uh, option B, uh, nerves four and six nerves 9 and 10, or cranial nerves 8 and 11. So which of the following groups of cranial nerves is most likely to be impaired in a patient with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis? We've got 2 and 3, optic and oculomotor, 4 and 6, trochlear and abducens, 9 and 10, hypoglossal and vagus, and 8 and 11, vestibulocochlear and spinal accessory. All right, so when it comes to amyotropic lateral sclerosis, this is one of those key key diagnoses, diagnoses you've got to have at least a, a fair or a solid understanding of. ALS, this is when you get sclera that appear throughout the central nervous system, resulting in both upper and lower motor neuron symptoms. And one of the other key things you'll see with folks with ALS is that they have what are called bulbar symptoms. So bulbar symptoms, this is when the cortical bulbar section of the brain has been affected, leading to some uh, significant swallowing difficulties. So these folks, um, they're very likely to have significant oral motor dysfunction, dysphagia, usually leads to some pretty significant speech and swallowing impairments. All of that is what leads to uh, what they call bulbar, the bulbar effect or bulbar symptoms. And so what does that mean? It just means that you're having difficulty with swallowing and speech. And so when it comes to the cranial nerves, cranial nerves number nine and 10 are the most likely to be, to be involved. And in fact, if you look at the cortical bulbar, the brainstem portion of the brain, so we're talking about the medullary region, region so down in the upper brainstem, cortical bulbar, the cortical bulbar area of the brain, we're talking about brainstem and swallowing function. This is going to be affecting cranial nerves number seven, or yeah, cranial nerves number five, seven, nine, 10, 12, really anything related to to speech and swallowing, you'll have some very significant effects. So again, that's called the bulbar effect or bulbar symptoms. Now there is something called pseudo bulbar symptoms. So pseudo bulbar symptoms, this is when you have the, the, um, how do you want to put it? (laughs) The the inappropriate reaction in either outbursts of laughing or crying, the the excessive 
excessive presentation of emotion that would be unexpected for the event or for the moment. And those are called pseudo bull bar issues. And again, uh, that's typically, typically when you have an irregular, unusual affect, we're talking about uh, uncontrollable bursts of laughing or crying that are inappropriate for the situation. Again, that's what are called pseudo bulbar. In this question, we're talking about the bulbar symptoms. So bulbar symptoms, these are talking specifically about swallowing function. So cranial nerves number five, seven, nine, 10, and 12. And then uh, in addition to this, I guess I wanna point out, I did see a question about this. I wanted to make sure that, that I mentioned this that when it comes to ALS, what is the primary predictor of mortality or the long-term prognosis for a patient? And really it boiled down to two things. Is it cognition or is it swallowing? And the, the correct answer was swallowing and the risk of aspiration pneumonia. This is what leads to more, higher mortality rates simply because uh, they're very much more likely to develop pneumonia and the, the consequent sequelae to that Whereas cognitive dysfunction, although quite common and certainly quite debilitating, has less of a risk of mortality as compared to swallowing deficits. So when you're trying to determine the prognosis for a patient, it is tied very, very strongly to uh, the ability to, to swallow. So we're talking about dysphagia, the risk of aspiration pneumonia, all of that would be related to the, the bulbar symptoms, which are commonly affected in a patient with ALS. So again, there's a lot that could be said about ALS. The things I see on test questions are usually about having a mixed upper and lower motor neuron symptom or up, upper and lower motor neuron presentation. Other things you see are related to the, to the respiratory system. So folks with ALS typically have extreme respiratory weakness, which leads to a weak cough, insufficient, uh, insufficient airway clearance techniques. So you as a PT, you're often involved not only in general functional training, but we're also talking about respiratory and swallow training, making sure that you're helping the patient have a good posture, making them, making sure you're helping them with effective coughs, all of this to make sure that they have the best outcome possible. And again, these are the, the key characteristics I see in questions that are related to amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or ALS. All right, so with that, we'll go ahead and bring today's session to a conclusion. Be sure to check out all the other episodes we've got on the NPT podcast. And as always, be sure to check out ptfinalexam.com where you can find all the course offerings, everything we've got. We've got a ton of freebies. If you go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, uh, that's where we have our freebies. You can find some free copies of our courses. I think you'll really enjoy it. Just go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast to be able to take advantage of all that free material we've got for you. And as always, be sure to follow us, like us, uh, subscribe to us. Everywhere you're listening to this podcast, leave us a five-star review. Plus, check us out over on Instagram. We've got tons of tips and tricks for the day. Also making a, a big dent over on TikTok. Check us out on all the socials. And in the meantime, stay safe out there. Have a fabulous day. We'll crane fist pumps all around. And I'll catch you all in the next episode. Thanks, everyone.